Thank you for listening to my daddy's podcast. Hey, don't let these tears fool you. It's all dog around this mug. I'm good. <laughs> Hey, what's going on, Who That Nation? My name is TJ Jones, and I am the host of the State of the Saints podcast. Thank you so much for checking out the State of the Saints podcast, where we talk New Orleans Saints. Did you miss me? (laughs) Did you miss me? Did you miss me? (laughs) Yeah, man, it's almost been two weeks since I've done the State of the Saints podcast. It's been two weeks. Since I've been behind this microphone talking to you all about the New Orleans Saints. And honestly, I'm going to tell you why. Uh, Because, quite frankly, didn't really feel like was much to talk about. Uh, There there wasn't much to talk about. Wasn't much to address. I got tired of talking about the same thing over and over and over and over again. I mean, I think we're all ready for the NFL draft. We're all ready for you know, to see what the Saints are going to do with the 14th pick. I mean, there's only so many ways you can dissect that, and there's only so many ways you can be entertaining uh, by talking about the same ish over and over and over again. But I am back, and uh, shouts out to everybody that reached out to me. No, nothing was wrong with me. I, I mean, I'm I'm in good health. Got occasional cough every now and then, but, you know, it's just because of these allergies and terrible uh, pollen that's in the air and here in South Carolina where I'm at. But other than that, I'm doing pretty great. And it's great to be back, and it's great to talk to you all about our favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. And on this edition, we're going to be talking a little bit about the Saints' appeal. That's right. We're going to be talking about are the Saints an unappealing football team? Now, some people are probably going to scowl at the topic. I do not care. Move along, losers. It needs to be talked about. The fact is, the New Orleans Saints and unappealing has been, honestly, a really appropriate adjective to describe this team over over the last two to three years. Uh, The New Orleans Saints, honestly, have not been very good. Uh, They have been hiding behind some of the success that they had over 15 years. Uh, Anytime we bring up success, we're still mentioning Sean Payton. And Drew Brees. And uh, there's some Saints fans out there that don't want to come to grips with it. Rather go and look at podcasts that blow smoke up their ass. So they think that I'm just some troll. But hey, it is what it is. The issue is the Saints are an unappealing football team. I think we all know that. And the reason why this topic is the topic of today's episode is because it's probably something that all of us have seen. Um, it's something that is going around social media going on Twitter, going on Instagram, there was a a live between 2023 Heisman Trophy winner, LSU quarterback, Jaden Daniels, who is supposed to get drafted pretty high, supposed to hear his name called pretty early in this year's draft, and also wide receiver Brian Thomas, whose name is going to be called pretty early as well. Two very talented players that if you're from Louisiana and you love LSU football, You love these guys. They sat down on a live and they were talking, discussing a few topics. And, you know, somebody put this into the chat. Check it out. I don't know, man. I don't know, Malik. Why are they talking about you? That you hype maintenance, bro. It's cap. They be capping, huh, bro? (sighs) You know, they got to pick somebody in this gym. I guess they just picked me. (laughs) Brian, Brian Thomas to the Saints. <laughs> all right so as you can see um my mistake it was Jaden daniels and malik neighbors they were talking and brian thomas name came up okay let me let me let me just go ahead and make that correction 
Malik Neighbors and Jaden Daniels were talking, but I still stand by what I said. Malik Neighbors' name is going to get called pretty early, and so is Jaden Daniels. Matter of fact, Malik Neighbors' name is going to be called before Brian Thomas. But as you can see, when Brian Thomas' name came up, both guys started to chuckle. Some people were saying, well, you know, they were just saying this because, you know, uh, you know, they were just joking around on social media. But the question is, Brian Thomas is nowhere to be found. And his name comes up and these guys start to chuckle. So the question is, why would they chuckle? But you have some people out there that's going to, you know, don't want to hear the obvious, don't want to hear the truth about their football team. It's because the New Orleans Saints aren't an appealing football team. Ain't nobody checking for no Derek Carr. And ain't nobody checking for no Dennis Allen because they have given Saints fans and NFL fans alike nothing to be excited about or nothing to fear when it comes to the New Orleans Saints. I'm sorry if this isn't popular opinion. I do not care. This is a very unappealing football team. The New Orleans Saints aren't going to get anybody's respect until they start winning some football games until they can move on from Saints fans talking about Sean Payton and Drew Brees, right? Like some of these Saints fans out here, I really feel bad for you. I really do. I feel very, very sorry for you uh, that you live in this land of delusion and you feel like just because the New Orleans Saints had some relevancy for 15 years, it just automatically just adds up in value and it starts to appreciate over time. So now you can't say anything bad about it. If I can use an appropriate analogy to describe some of these Saints fans out here, it's like Wesley Snipes on Mo Better Blues. And if you haven't seen Mo Better Blues, I encourage you to check it out. It was a Spike Lee movie. It was directed by Spike Lee. It was about uh, Wesley Snipes, who was a, you know, and, and Denzel Washington, who was, Denzel was a really good trumpet player. He was Really talented, man. I mean, he would go to the clubs and everybody would sit in the front row. The ladies would love him. The guys would love him, man. Everybody wanted to be Denzel and play the trumpet like Denzel did in his movie. But then something happened and Denzel had like this tragic incident and he went back to the club a little while later. And he graced the stage with the same trumpet that everybody was cheering and everybody wanted to him play. And he couldn't hit the notes like he did. So he got that pat on the back from Wesley Snipes like, it's all right, brother. It's all right. Some of you are still trying to go to the club thinking that you're still playing a trumpet like Louis Armstrong. But honestly, you sound more like Scott Armstrong. Look it up if you don't know who Scott Armstrong is. He has absolutely nothing to do with jazz whatsoever. Some of you are still living in the past. And because... The Saints were so good throughout those years. You feel like you're entitled to feel the way that you do. But look around you, okay? Read the room. The room is that this team isn't very good. The, the, the fact is nobody fears the Saints anymore. And the respect level that was, was built up because of Sean Payton and Drew Brees and the Super Bowl in 09, all that stuff is out of the window. That is completely passe. So don't get mad at me because what I'm saying to you is the obvious. I can't live in the past. I am one of the biggest Saints fans that you're ever going to find. You're not going to find a bigger Saints fan than me, folks. I've been rooting for the Saints since I was four. I'm 37. I'm going to be 38 in August. So I've been rooting for this team for a long time. So for all the people that just think that I'm trolling, probably know more about Saints football and forgot more than you know. But I digress. The fact is, I can't live in a past like you. And this is a very unappealing football team. And it is an absolute joke if you don't look at it that way. Nobody is checking for no Dennis Allen and ain't nobody checking for no Derek Carr. Derek Carr ended the season on a high note. I will give him credit. 14 touchdowns, two interceptions, the same stat line that we have put up into the faces of people that were, uh, you know, people that were critics of Jameis Winston. He ended the season on a high note. They ended what? Winning four or five games, four out of their last five games. All that stuff is true. But to me, it is a bunch of empty calorie 
sit a bunch of empty calorie stacks and an empty calorie record that is not going to help you going into the next season. Now, some people would probably say, well, look what happened with the Detroit Lions. They finished the season on a high note back in 2022. They knocked out the Green Bay Packers from making the playoffs, and then they turned around and went to the NFC Championship game. But you know the difference between the Detroit Lions and the New Orleans Saints? When you look at their coach, Dan Campbell, this guy is an emotional guy. He's a passionate guy. He's a guy that you can actually believe in, despite the fact that he's not the best coach in the world. He wears his heart on his sleeve, and he will let you know that he may not be the best. But because you love this guy and respect this guy so much, you want to run through a wall for him. See, people look for perfection in coaches, but you don't have to be perfect to be a head coach. You just have to, you, you just have to be a guy that guys could believe in. And there's not a human being on the face of God's green earth besides the fact that if their name, his last name is Allen, that anybody truly believes in Dennis Allen as a head coach. And it's, it, it is a waste of time that we are even at this point. It is a waste of time going back and forth with people that don't want to see the forest through the trees, do not want to look at the fact that this team is not very appealing. Nobody wants to just come to the New Orleans Saints like they once did. When Drew Brees was there being a quarterback, why wouldn't you want to come to the New Orleans Saints if you're a wide receiver or offensive lineman? You know you're going to win some football games. You know you're going to make the playoffs more times than not. But looking at Dennis Allen and Derek Carr, why in the hell would anybody stand there, go Batman, Superman, and be a Cape Crusader for this inept football team? Now, once again, if the Saints want to change the narrative of what people think about them, they got to win some football games. And even with that, this is putting cologne on a musty body bringing in coaches that know what they're doing to try to hide the imperfections of the coach that doesn't know what he's doing. It's only a matter of time before people start to realize that he's not very good anyway. So regardless, if you try to dress this thing up to try to make him look the part, eventually everybody's going to find out that he's not the guy. So how much time are we wasting here? Seriously, how much time are we going to have to waste? I mean, if you go into 2024 and you win some football games, what, Mickey Loomis can go to the podium and say, I told you so, only for a team to like what they see and Clint Kubiak give him a head coaching job, and you're right back to being in 2023-2022 New Orleans Saints. It is time to face reality, who that nation. I don't care if you like it. I really don't. The fact is, nobody's checking for no Derek Carr, and ain't nobody checking for no Dennis Allen. They are prolonging the inevitable. And until this team realizes that what they have in place is not going to give you sustainable success, they are going to continue to fall flat on their face and it's going to continue to make Saints fans all over as frustrated as a red light is holding for about five to ten minutes. Y'all ever been like on a highway or you know, like they always have them long red lights and it's just like it takes forever to turn green. That is where we at right now. We are on I-10, right? You know what I'm saying? It is stop and go traffic and we're frustrated, right? But everybody get off on the Claiborne exit because they don't want to be on I-10 either. So they got to go through light after light after light to get home. And that is where we at right now. At a bunch of lights. All we're trying to do is get home, but it's taking too damn long. And don't just take my word for it, man. Don't take my word for it. But there, there are several other people that feel this way. I, I was talking to a well-respected analyst, former football player, basically told me that until the Saints get rid of Dennis Allen, they ain't winning Jack. So... There you go right there. I mean, it is what it is. Like, it's not just me talking. It's several individuals that are well-respected that feel the same way. But I get it. 
I get it. We, we got to keep on pushing this narrative. We got to give you something to believe in. We got to make people like TJ Jones sound like he a hater and he don't know what he's talking about and he trolling, but that's okay. All I got to say is just wait, just wait, just wait and you'll see. You, you'll see, but that's why I stand in it. That's why I stand. All the Saints are unappealing football team. I mean, it's the sky blue. It's the grass green. Right? I mean, it's it's so obvious, right? It's, 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 about as, it's about as obvious as people, like, as Paxton and my son. Like, you don't even, you know, like, you know. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can look at them. It's pretty obvious. It's pretty obvious. But, hey. Go ahead and take some of your comments, man. Shouts out to everybody here. Thank y'all, man. Give y'all a round of applause, man. Appreciate y'all for being here. The only thing I ask, I, I just ask, that you hit the like button. I only ask that you hit the subscribe button. Oh, your boy is back, man. It's, entertainment is back. Saints Entertainment on YouTube and every other platform is back. I'm real. I'm refreshed. And uh, honestly... No Fs are given right now. So y'all about to get some really good content from yours truly because I do not care about how people feel about my takes on the New Orleans Saints. I did at one time, but I do not care because it's time for the real to hit this to the, hit this platform when it comes to this team, straight up. But let me go ahead and read some of your comments. And, uh, and I also want to say this, if you don't want to hit a real, they got other places for you to tell you everything going to be all right and the Saints going to go undefeated and, you know, like Dennis Allen going to win coach of the year. All that stuff that y'all want to hear, I'm pretty sure they got plenty of other platforms out there. But we ain't about to do that here. We ain't about to do that here. And I'm about as big as a Saints fan as you're going to find. So, haters, it is what it is, all right? But we ain't, we ain't, we ain't sugarcoating over here. They got That's that other show. Uh, let's see, Charlie Dog 3D, give me a 100. Gonna stroll down. Says, might as well be the New Orleans Raiders. Yep, exactly. Why, like, this is the question I have for everybody. People like Wi-Fi Willie out there that's out there caping for Derek Carr. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I guess, like, when you cheer for losers for so long, like, you, you think losers are winners. I, I don't know. People like Wi-Fi Willie that cape for Derek Carr, who, you know, all these different Raiders, that's coming to the New Orleans Saints. Like my question is, like honestly, why would you take a team that has been losing since 2003 and say, you know what, I want some of that? Yeah, y'all ever thought, y'all ever thought to yourself, like honestly, you ever thought to yourself that the New Orleans Saints, the last time Derek Carr was a member of the Raiders, right? When he played the New Orleans Saints, can somebody indulge me? Somebody, please help me out with this. How many touchdowns did Derek Carr put up? Matter of fact, how many points did the Raiders put up that day? Now, just think about this. Think, think about the ineptitude here. Think about the, the ridiculousness. You got a guy who couldn't put the ball into the end zone. And you looked at this guy and said, you know what? This dude can help us win. Are you out of your freaking mind? And, and miss me with that stuff. Well, 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 the Raiders, they ain't have nobody. They ain't have no offense. Josh Jacobs and what? Devontae Adams, two of the best at their position. And you still couldn't put the ball into the end zone? So miss me with that nonsense right there. Like that goes to show you like, like the, the, the loser mentality that this team has. You looked at a guy who couldn't muster up no points, no touchdowns, and said to yourself, you know what? I want some of that. This is a guy that can lead this team post Drew Brees. This is a guy who is 10 years into his career. He has Super Bowl MVP written all over him. Let's give this guy $100 million of guaranteed money. But th this is the logic that, and, and this is the thing that we're supposed to support. And this is the thing that we're supposed to be excited about. You take a loser who was on a losing team with a losing mentality, and you bring them to a team that actually established themselves as a contender. But because they have a loser as a head coach with a losing mentality and they won nothing. Think about this. 
This man went, what, nine and eight and said he going out for a beer to celebrate. What a loser. Like, your team should have had at least 11 or 12 wins. And you going out for a beer, finishing nine and eight. The best records you've ever had as a head coach. Loser mentality. So, this is what we're going to do. Every Raider that played, Derek Carr did what? He's going to go to the to top floor and talk to Dennis Lauscher and talk to Mickey Loomis. Man, we really need this guy. Guy couldn't catch a cold and 40 below. So deep on the depth chart, his mama can't find him. His mama couldn't identify him. But let's bring him to the Saints because he is going to turn around the misfortunes of this team. You got to be freaking kidding me. But this is the type of stuff that people want you to get behind. And if you don't get behind it, then you're a hater. You're a hater. TJ, you're a hater. You don't know what you're talking about. You're a troll. This is the type of stuff, right? But I'm supposed to take your word for it. See, let me tell y'all something. I am a Saints fan. But I am not a super emotional Saints fan. I tell you things that I see. I, I don't, look, I'm not Miss Cleo. I'm not Nostradamus. I'm, I'm not the great Bean, Bon Beanie. I can't predict the future. I can't. I can only base my judgment on what I see. And what I see is a losing mentality. What I see is pure desperation. What I see is arrogance. What I see is a team that feels like we got 15 years built up so Saints fans need to be quiet. But I'm not being quiet, who that nation. I'm not being quiet, Saints organization. Because what you have turned this team into is an absolute joke. I mean, Jaden Daniels and Malik Neighbors ain't the only one laughing. So they're going to have to figure this thing out. And until they figure it out, I am going to feel the way that I feel, which is they ain't winning jack as long as they got these two individuals that are pulling the trigger. You got Dennis Allen pulling the trigger or, you know what I'm saying, giving out the, the, the handgun here, and you got Derek Carr as the trigger man. I'm good on that, right? I'm good on that. You 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 got you got Dennis Allen as the getaway driver. I'm pretty sure the police caught him right then and there, within five minutes after the crime was taking place. Uh, let's see. Uh, still be black and gold, but I'll be on the Raiders logo. Uh, because every time you turn around, an ex Raider player or a coach member uh comes to the New Orleans Saints. All I'm saying is Jerry, and this is a good point. What have they done? What have they won? What have they achieved? Really, seriously, what, what have they done? What have they achieved in order for them like to be top priority like they have been? Nothing. Not at all. A mediocre football team, bottom of the barrel football team in the Oakland, Las Vegas Raiders, and yet you look at this team and like, we can do something with them. You can't do anything with the talent that got the Saints to the playoffs. So how the hell can you turn around a, a, a player and, and make that player work for you that's coming from a team that didn't win nothing, just like you haven't won anything? But the Saints are the most appealing football team to some of you. Man, we better not pick a, a third-round prospect with an extensive uh, injury history in the first. I don't feel like that's going to happen. I feel like the Saints are probably going to get more sure things, which they should and should have been doing. The Saints for years have been drafting based on cockiness. Like, even from the days of Sean Payton. Watch what I can do with this guy. Oh, they don't know what this guy is capable of, but watch what I do with him. More so than going with a sure thing. I think with Dennis Allen... This Saints organization, they cannot afford to go out here and go with projects. They have to draft guys who can hit the ground running right away. That is how you're going to get yourself out of this situation. That is how you're going to break free of mediocrity. That is how you're going to get back to being a continuous playoff team. If you don't do that, then honestly, 
this guy's bags are going to be packed much earlier than anticipated. So to me, you better be looking at Olu Fashanu. You better be looking at Telelise of, you know, uh, Telelise of, what is it, Fianu. You got to be looking at guys like that. Like, you got to be looking at Fatanu. You got to be looking at, uh, you, you got to be looking at uh, Tyler Guyton. You got to be looking at Joe Oak. You got to be looking at some of these other guys. You, you got to be looking at some of these, these guys that are big, strong, and that can help you out in the trenches. Like, you got to look at Fuaga. You got to look at these guys. You got to look at Fashanu. Too many Fs out here. Fashanu, Fuaga, Fatanu. Like, what, what are we doing, man? A lot, lot of Fs, right? A lot of Fs and, and, and hard to pronounce last names. But regardless, one of these guys with a complicated first and last name or a very unique first and last name needs to be on the left or the right side of the Saints offensive line. And I'm saying right side because we already know what's going on with Ryan Ramchick. And miss me with that stuff. Oh, man, you don't know if Ryan Ramchick is going to be here this season. Well, when Dennis Allen said, that's your first mistake right there. Dennis Allen said. So if somebody comes to me that's watching this on X and I get off this, and I see somebody say, Dennis Allen said, blocked. Blocked. You know why? Because Dennis Allen said that Jameis Winston injury wasn't as bad as it seemed. Back in 2022, did we see Jameis Winston anymore after that back injury? Nope. Andy Dalton was the quarterback. Dennis Allen said, that Michael Thomas will be back sooner rather than later. Back in 2022, did he come back again? Hell no. Dennis Allen said that Marshawn Lattimore, his ankle injury wasn't as bad as it seemed. He should be back sooner rather than later. Did we see Marshawn Lattimore for the rest of the season? Hell no. So why in the world should I believe that Dennis Allen is telling me that Ryan Ramchek, I believe that he's going to be back sooner rather than later. And everybody else is telling me that this could be something that's season ending. You know what I'm preparing for, who that nation, and what you should be preparing for? You should be preparing to not see Ryan Ramchek for the rest of the season. Now, if he does come back, <laughs> hooray. But I do not believe anything that comes out of the mouth when it comes to injuries from head coach Dennis Allen. Now, I will say this too, and I said this on a Bleacher Report on the last podcast that I put out. I encourage everybody to check it out. I just recently did a podcast on Bleacher Report, Saints Talk with TJ Jones on Bleacher. I said this. I said one thing about Sean Payton. We did not like it, but he did not disclose injuries. We didn't like it. We didn't like the fact that he was hushed mouth. But you know what? You can never put his foot to the fire for him saying, well, you said that Michael Thomas was going to be back. Well, you said that Ron Ramchick was going to be back. You heard it rather from Ian Rappaport or Nick Underhill or, or those other insiders out there. You did not hear from Sean Payton. And this is the reason why people are frustrated with Dennis Allen because you go to the podium and you're trying to put people's minds at ease and you don't know really what the hell you're talking about. Or somebody's giving you information that, that is going to end up not being true. So people are already frustrated with you as the head coach. So everything that you do on top of not being very good at your job, people are going to get frustrated. Because you're losing. You're not living up to your potential. But the guys that are supposed to help you to be able to reach that potential, you're telling us they'll be back sooner rather than later, and it doesn't happen. So nothing that comes out of the mouth of Dennis Allen when it comes to injury, I believe. If Ryan Ramchek runs out there for the offseason or during the season, I'm going to be happy. But I do not believe anything that comes out of the mouth of Dennis Allen when it comes to injuries. And if you do that based on this track record, you're a fool. You're a fool. Fool me once. Shame on what? Me? Fool me twice, shame on you. So if you're still trying to believe that or trying to 
Come into the chat. Come on social media with that nonsense blocked. I mean it. Miss me with that stuff. I don't care what you have to say. You're, you're absolutely delusional. You are the guy whose woman has been gone for six days straight, hasn't called you, hasn't texted, and you still leaving the door unlocked. She'll be back tonight. She'll be back tomorrow night. Miss me with that, man. Miss me with the nonsense. Mr. Gumchua begged to differ. Man. <laughs> Thank you uh, for the sense of reality. Saints uh, are barely hanging on uh, the relevancy in the immediate area. Well, look, <laughs> Brenton, I, I just find it funny, man. I've been like, man, for the last two, y'all y'all know I've been on. Like anybody that follows me on X, y'all know I've been like, I've been active on social media uh, still. And just some of the stuff that people just actually believe, like, honestly, man, I, like, I wonder, like, are they like four years, four years old, like my son? Like, you know, you tell my son, okay, man, the Easter Bunny outside, he knocking on the door right now. He gonna run to the door anticipating the Easter Bunny. Some of you are anticipating like, like fabricated ish that y'all haven't even seen yet. All I'm saying is, look, I'm not from Missouri, but you're gonna have to show me. You're gonna have to show me that you're worth me investing in. That That's anything in life. Anything in life. Nobody is like, are you honestly, you get paid on a Friday and let's just say you need a car. Are you going to go to a guy or a woman who's selling a car and not tell them to start it up? Take my money. I don't know if this car starts or not. You're not going to test drive it or nothing, right? You're just going to take it at face value. Some of you are taking this junk at face value because you want to believe it. And I get it. I want to believe that the Saints going to make the playoffs. I want to believe that the Saints going to make it to the Super Bowl. I want to believe that Dennis Allen can finally look like a head coach. I want to feel like Derek Carr, after 11 seasons, can lead the Saints somewhere. But I need to see it. Once again, I'm not from Missouri. Shouts out to everybody out there from the Louis area, St. Louis, Missouri area. But you got to show me. You got to show me. Don't come to me with asking and wishing. Don't come to me with, with hope and grace and prayer and faith, okay? I told y'all, in my eyes, grace, hope, and faith, or just the name of three girls that I know. You got to show me. And if you just come in there tweeting because it sounds good, TJ, well, man, you just always negative. Give me something to be positive about. I'm not here to reassure you. I don't get paid to reassure you. I don't do this podcast to reassure anybody. I do this podcast to tell you what I see. If you want reassurance, like I said, they got a podcast out there for you. Scared to tell you the truth. Probably scared they're going to lose their positions and where they at. I don't care. You're not going to get that here. I don't owe this team nothing. Just like they don't owe me anything. I am going to tell you what it is. Sorry. Like, you know, like I'm sorry some of y'all want to cry about it all the time. But y'all not going to change the way that I feel. I am not going to change my ways to make you feel at ease about your tape. They got other podcasts for that. They got other shows for that. But it ain't here. Now, if they give you something to cheer about, trust me. I will, look, go, go back to and look at 2018, 2019. A lot of positive stuff there. But when we're living in 2024 and a team ain't looking the way that it once did, what do you want me to do? What should I do? Woo, yeah, boy. I know the Saints went nine and eight and they played against quarterbacks like Tyson Bajor and Garden Mitchell. But I tell you what, man, they're going to make the Super Bowl, boy. They're going to make the Super Bowl. I know Josh Dobbs put up the greatest game in his entire career and basically put up 300 yards on the New Orleans Saints only for next week to get benched. But woo, boy, they're going to the Super Bowl. I know that Matt Rule got fired the week after they beat the New Orleans Saints. But, boy, I tell you, this team, this is a playoff contender right here, boy. This is a team that you got to be insane not to believe that they're going to make the Super Bowl. Give me a freaking break. 
if, if some of you like hear this stuff out loud and, and hear how your logic sounds like in real time, you'll realize how how ridiculous you you sound. <laughs> like, I, 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 look for people that just think like they literally got idiots out here like this. Oh, TJ, you shouldn't call them idiots. No, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. If, if somebody is telling you and showing you that they are not worthy of your takes and your feelings and you still put it out there and still try to cape for them, you're an idiot. Like, for real. Like, it don't make you a, a stronger fan because you don't see reality. That makes you delusional. If I tell you it's dark outside and you're still walking out here like, man, this boy, it's a bright, sunny day. Like, you're delusional. Give me something to believe in. And I will guarantee you, the State of the Safe podcast will be way more optimistic. But until then, Saints fans, as I hear TJ, you so negative, go cry in the corner. Good seeing you back, TJ. Uh, you helped my days on this UPS truck go faster by listening. Ace, I appreciate that. Uh, like I said, I don't want to dilute my podcast i just don't i'm not going to sit up here and tell you the same thing over again well you know the saints they got several fifth round picks who are they gonna go like i'm just not i'm just not there was nothing to talk about there's nothing really to address there was nothing really to say so i'm not gonna do it and i, I can't give fake shows like some like i just can't like it's only so many ways that you can talk about the nfl draft it's only so like we all know we all know the Saints need offensive line help in the first round. We all know this. We know that more than likely the second round, they'll probably get a wide receiver or another, you know, another pass rush. Like we, we know this stuff. We know this. So why do we have to keep on having shows? Like it's only so many ways that you can evaluate Joe Alt to make you all feel like, Oh man, Joe Alt is the answer. You know, uh, you know, so many ways that you can go after Fuaga and, and, and for Shanu and uh, for, Tan for Tanu. Like, it's only so many ways you can evaluate these guys. We know what the Saints need. So ain't no need to keep on making this thing, you know, over and over again and keep on talking about the same stuff. I ain't trying to put nobody to sleep because I'm going to be honest with you. If I was to come on here over the last 12 days and do shows, they wouldn't have been very good. And they would have been very disingenuous. I'm, I'm just be honest with you. I would just be doing that to be monetized. And that's just not how it works. Now, I appreciate monetization, but at the same time, I'm not going to just dilute the show. I'm just not. And I'd rather people, you know, understand that. And honestly, I understand what type of risk that takes. You know, that, that's a risk, right? Not doing shows, risking not being, you know, subscribers, like whatever. But I want to make sure that I give everybody all of me and my thoughts and my views and the passion behind them so i appreciate that ace i thank you for that i appreciate everybody that reached out to me but i you will never ever get a disingenuine tj jones you just won't you, you just won't and if i feel like i'm being disingenuine i don't care what's going on. i don't care if the greatest news ever that came out from saint football if I ain't feeling it or I feel like I'm not going to give you my all or my head is not in the game, I'm not going to do it. I owe everybody that has ever subscribed to this channel that much. So I'm, I'm not just going to do it. You know, I'm not I'm not just I'm not just here for subscribers. I mean, I'm just not. If you subscribe, like, honestly, if you look at over the course of time, I mean, I mean, I, I've got my fair share of subscribers, but I'm not in it just for that. I appreciate everybody that subscribed, and I want you to, but I'm just not gonna not gonna devalue the show by just having shows talking about the same thing over and over again. Uh hey TJ and who that fam until the Saints show me, I will sit in my corner and eat my food. Yeah, I'm a, hey Pammy, I'm gonna sit there and I'm gonna eat my food too. Okay. I'm a, I'm gonna sit there, chillax, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna watch the I'm just gonna watch the show. Yeah, when they turn it around. When they get better, when they go out here and live up to their potential, guess what? I'm going to be as excited as any Saints fan. But until then, I'm going to tell you what I see based on what I see. Call it reaching. Call me Stretch Armstrong. Call me TJ Armstrong. I don't care what you call me. Just don't, just, just don't call me disingenuous because that's just what it is. 
I don't I don't have to. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't do this this stuff to create a, a character. This is me. This is me. And now honestly, like since you know, I, I really got some time to kind of process it. This is really me. So y'all really about to get the real deal. For real. Cause I do. I do not care. Like my priority is to the people that support this show. Whatever happens in between, it just happens. Uh, is it possible one of the prettiest places in Arkansas and the Ozark? Um, I don't know exactly what we're talking about here. How do we go from the Saints to, to the Ozarks? I don't know. <laughs> good good uh, show on Netflix, though. Uh, this still a uh, hype over them trash wins we pulled off against trash cans at the end of last season. Ace, I'm gonna just tell you, I'm gonna say it like this. Um, a lot of Cancun on three wins took place. Right, you can talk about that Tampa Bay game. Tampa, you know, what I'm saying that probably that was a legit win. That was a legit win. Atlanta fan base don't like the don't like the coach. Didn't like Arthur Smith. Players wasn't a big fan of Arthur Smith. Thus, he got fired. It seemed like the only people that are still trying to hold on, despite their fan base not liking them team not liking him uh you know like nobody cares about him is is, is dennis out and, and, and mickey loomis that's the only ones it, it seems like you know they they show you how how trash they are at their job you got players that are speaking out saying all these different things and it's just not good enough for you no don't worry about it dennis we gonna get them next year man forget about what they say boo he sucks man you don't suck dennis we got the right guys in the building. Let's fire everybody. Be, like they, We got the right guys in the building, but let's go ahead and fire the offensive side of football. Let's get them all up out of here. I really believe that I got the right people in the building. I really feel like I got a really good car, but I'm going to take it back to the dealership. I really feel like I got the right loaf of bread, but let me bring this back to the store. Does that make sense? Like, think about this. If you have the right thing, are you bringing it back? Well, are you bringing it back? Hell no. But once again, man, he said he got the right people in the building. I believe Mickey Lou. I don't understand why. What a like seriously, man. Like I'm, I'm just wondering. Like I, I, I'm from Louisiana. I'm just wondering, man. Like. Did the, did the school system fail some of you? I'm just wondering, like. Like, I'm just wondering, like, how can, like, they feed you this nonsense and y'all just believe it? Like, I just don't understand how y'all just don't believe it. It's just it's amazing. Like, people really be going at my neck. They be really be going at other people's neck. Like, trying to defend his team like we ain't watching the same football. I'm sitting up here watching three-plus hours of same football just like you. Man, man. We, we we ain't win this week, but we'll get them next week. Loss. Well, well, well I see some changes. I, I see some improvement. Third loss. Well, I, I just feel like this team, they 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 gonna get it together, man. Derek Carr hurt, offensive line hurt. Like <laughs> Man, my goodness, man. The, the excuses people come up with besides the fact of just saying to themselves. <laughs> <laughs> maybe this thing ain't working but that that's something wrong with me there's something wrong with you who that nation now nah, it, it's not it, it's not we we not watching the same game they, they watching something else stretch armstrong says y'all can call me tj jones from now on yeah i mean people say man you trying to reach you reaching tj you reach man yeah i see what you trying to do for content man please I'm not trying to brag or boast, or maybe I am, but I'm pretty damn entertaining. I don't need to steal people's ideas. I don't need to, I don't need to reach for for follows or likes. I don't. I have been here for two since 2018, been a one man show. And you know what I'm saying? My my, my retention rate is high. You know, people, you know what I'm saying, support the show. I gotta be doing something right. So Man, but you reaching, DJ. Man, you just trying to be relevant. Man. <laughs> man, these people are just like seriously. Like people will say anything to you besides, you know, except try to do except the obvious. The obvious is this team is, is lackluster. 
It's lackluster. I reach when I say this team is lackluster. I don't need to reach, man. Like, it, it, just go look at just go look at the facts. Go look at the tape. You got Tyson Bajan out here in the first half, looking like he Joe Montana of the second coming. You got to go in the second half to order to neutralize a guy from Shepherd University. I, I lived like I saw Tyson Bajan. That, that's the, actually the combine I went to. I, I talked to Tyson Bajan. I was at the, the senior bowl when Tyson Bajan was there, right? I mean, I had to, like, literally go on Wikipedia and find out where Shepard at. Got this man out here looking like he Joe Montana in the first half. You had to make halftime adjustments to neutralize a, a guy who just happy to be there. Had everything fall, like, manna raining down from heaven in the form of backup and mediocre quarterback play, and you still go 9-8. and eight. But I'm reaching. Well, call me Stretch Armstrong, God dug it. <laughs> call me, call me TJ Armstrong. Call me the Reach King. I really feel like I can run a marathon, but I have no legs. Thank you, T Dirty. I really feel like I can drink this milk. I'm lactose intolerant. Okay, I mean, guess technically you can, but still, I mean, it wouldn't be good for you, right? Wouldn't be good for you. Uh, I had a dream. We started off two and six, and we was getting uh beat bad and rejoiced over a touchdown. I feel like I got to read that like Martin Luther King. Oh, I have a dream. We started off two and six, and we was getting beat bad and rejoiced over a touchdown. I, I'm just saying, man, like it, it's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. Probably my Martin Luther King uh impression too. But yeah, if we going two and six, man, Dennis Allen don't need to be here. I seen enough. Ain't that with uh <laughs> with, with Jamal Brown when uh Sean Pay was like, I seen enough. I seen enough. I seen enough, man. If you going two and six, you can't say that. J Rock says, uh TJ, uh you right about the Saints, but they will be playing and uh we uh hate uh our coach bowl and the Saints versus the Cowboys. Uh they can't stand their coach either. Well, I tell you what. I'd rather have Mike McCarthy than than Dennis Allen. Look, you you can't look you, you can't win a Super Bowl if you don't make it to the playoffs. Mike McCarthy didn't made it to the playoffs, so I mean the dislike is a little bit different. I mean I would take Mike McCarthy today over Dennis Allen. Today I, I would take him. Like Mike McCarthy, look everybody can't make it to the Super Bowl. Like. There's levels to coaching. I'm I'm sorry. Like it, there is. There's levels to coaching. There's some coaches. <clears throat> me. There's some coaches that are going to win you a lot of games, but ain't gonna win nothing of significance. There are gonna be coaches that's gonna w- probably not win as much, but when it's when it's crunch time, they can put it together. I look at Tom Coughlin. Like you look at some of the teams that Tom Coughlin led to the Super Bowl. They win like. 13, 14 win teams. They were like, what, 9 and 7, 10 and 6. But when it was playoff time, he buckled down and handled up on business. You got coaches like that. Then you got coaches that is just undeniable. The Andy Reeves, the Bill Belichicks. Like them for better or for worse, they won a lot of football games. They won a lot of football games, and they cashed it in with Super Bowl appearances and Super Bowl championships. There's levels to this. So... I would take Mike McCarthy in a minute. Now, Dennis Allen, that, that, I mean, that, that's not really saying much, you know? I mean, there, there's very there's a few other coaches that are lackluster that I would take over Dennis Allen because I just don't feel like Dennis Allen is the answer. Dennis Allen has turned the New Orleans Saints into an absolute joke. And I stand by that. I stand 10 toes down with that statement. He has turned this team into a joke. They, they are an absolute joke. They are a joke and it's on his watch it's on his watch so there you go okay josh got you i don't know exactly what what did josh say uh pammy uh let's see yes this has been my account for a, a couple months okay i guess he was talking about his uh, account there let's see uh tj uh we done adding through free agency you think well i mean king arthur who can you bring in who i mean who, who we bringing in who are bringing in like, like, uh, the only, like the only 
player of, of significance I feel like the Saints can bring in that can probably help them is Lyle Collins. I, I don't think Trey Turner is still on the team. I think he signed a one-year deal. So the, the question marks about Ryan Ramchick bringing in a right a person to, to serve as a right tackle. I mean, you got Ali Udo out there, which if something was to happen to Ram, I feel like, you know, Udo would be there. But unless you bring in Lyle Collins, unless you bring back Trey Turner, Odell maybe, I, I don't know. Um, you ain't winning nothing. Like, see, like who, who else is out there? Like, who else out there that can help you win something? I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not in the, look, I, I, I'm not one of those individuals that feel like you should just, just bring somebody in just to bring somebody, like, who, who, who's out there? Who's out there that they can bring in that can, that can give you some level of value from a position that, that, that you're missing? Like, what, what kind of value can they bring in? And the only place I can look is, uh, is on the offensive line. <clears throat> You still don't know what you're going to do with the guards position. More than likely, you're probably going to try Trevor Pennant out at that position because maybe Andrews Pete, not the answer. You know, like, I mean, he, he's still out there from, from what I know. So unless you ain't bring, unless you bring back Andrews Pete, um, you know, you're going to go with uh, Trevor Penny. So unless it's an offensive lineman, I, I don't see who you can bring in that's, that's of any significance. That's going to make Saints fans feel like, okay, man, that, that'll that help. It has to be somebody on the offensive line. That's the only thing to me, like, that, you know, can kind of move the needle and make Saints fans be like, oh, okay. That's safety from uh, Denver. Yeah, Justin Simmons, but, yeah, I mean, that, that will bring a level of excitement. But I'm, I'll be honest with you, like, I think the Saints would be okay at the safety position. If if they didn't get Justin Simmons, <clears throat> Justin Simmons would honestly just be, I guess, an ace. You know what I'm saying? An ace in a hand. You know, like, I, I feel like they can be just as good. Like, Jordan Howden, to me, played better than May. He played better than Marcus May did. So, when I, I look at that, I'm like, you know, I mean, I, I didn't like when you looked at the safety position, I didn't I didn't really hear too many people saying stuff like, you know. Sorry about that. I had to talk to Paxton for a second. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, I mean, Jordan Howden played pretty good play better than Marcus May. Uh so when I look at it it's like Okay, but hold on one second. Sorry, folk, fatherhood comes first. So yeah, make, sure, <laughs> make sure my little man straight. But anyway, I'm, I'm going to take a few more, and then we're going to go ahead and get up out of here, man. Go ahead and get up out of here. Uh, let's see. Uh, our schedule this year is hell. I mean, yeah, you playing the AFC West, one of the, like, one of the best divisions with the best quarterback play. So, I mean, well, I don't say best quarterback play. I mean, because you still have – but you still have Justin Herbert, and you got Patrick Mahomes to go up against. And you also have, I'm pretty sure, like, Denver is going to have a talented quarterback. The Raiders are going to have a talented quarterback. And we can't just say, well, he's a rookie. He's inexperienced. Like, we've we seen how the most mediocre quarterbacks can make 
uh, Dennis Allen looked like a complete idiot calling defense. So J. Cole pulled a Dennis Allen. <laughs> he apologized. Right. But, I mean, he should apologize to the fans for that trash uh, diss record. Yeah, I said it. I like J. Cole, but that wasn't it. And even he knew. But that goes to show you right there. When I said that, when I said that, oh, man, it was just a light jam. It was a light. Boy, we're going to defend the people we love. Man, it was a light jam. Man, it wasn't his best. He was just sending out warning shots. He comes out and said, man, it just wasn't good. It, it just wasn't, you know, it, I, I, I didn't feel comfortable about putting that out. When he says it, all of a sudden I hear crickets. Where's that same energy at? Where's like, the disrespect level? When I when I post something like that, then all of a sudden I say something about, you know, you know all of a sudden it's crickets, right? we it get proven true. But hey, I be reaching though. Call me TJ. That is my new TJ Armstrong is, is my new nickname because everybody say, you know, I'm the I'm the king of reaching, okay? But just like I, I reached about Chase Young. I was reaching. But you know, when Shepton Underhill came out, what about 12, 14 hours later? Crickets. Y'all gonna start believing in a kid one day. Y'all gonna start believing in a kid one day. I ain't just up here trying to shoot the ish. I don't have to reach. I ain't gotta reach. I'm an entertaining mother lover. I don't have to reach. Let's see. Tell the truth, TJ. I'm not going uh getting my hopes up. I'm not getting my hopes up either. As they start to win, if they win, then my hopes will start to go up. And I will have more optimistic episodes. We'll have more positive episodes. I don't look for the negative. It's so obvious. It, it's right there. If, if, if there's optimism, I'm I'm grabbing it. I'm grabbing it. But man, it, it just it's so it's too many moral victories going on. Like how many moral vic well. They did throw the ball pretty well in the fourth quarter. Yeah, when the defense was about as soft as a baby's ass. You know what I'm saying? Prevent defense. Yeah, of course they're going to have like lanes wide open. Of course they're going to have the middle field wide open. They want you to catch the ball because they want the clock to keep moving. But look at, man, look what it, look at these fourth quarter numbers right here. Look at what they did in the fourth quarter. Look at the battle. Look at the grit. It's me with that. TJ, I have three prospects. I would uh would be uh, good additions to the team. Georgia safety, Juwan uh, Bullard, Wake Forest, uh, Malik, uh, Musfat, I guess Mufat, Mufasta, I don't know. Texas A&M, <laughs> uh, linebacker E. Cooper, your thoughts on any of the prospects? Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. Don't know nah one of them. Probably for the seven of J uh, Javon Bullard. I've seen him play quite a few times. But the other guys, not too familiar with their game. And honestly – haven't been really looking at safety play the way that I should, Dolph, because quite frankly, I just feel like that's just one of those positions that just kind of laid on down the line that I feel like that's not really a top priority uh, for the New Orleans Saints at this particular moment. So I really don't know that much about those guys. Uh, I'm not going to try to sugarcoat or, 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 you know, fabricate it or try to make it seem like I know. I'll go check them out at the end of this podcast and I have something better for you, but I really kind of looked at mostly positions that I feel like the Saints will be going after in the top, you know, in the top two. I, I don't see the Saints drafting a safety in the second round. I, I don't see that. Like maybe they will. I mean, these are these are the Dennis Allen, Mickey Loomis Saints that we talking about here. They're sitting in everybody else, and we don't know what we're talking about. And um, how dare we boot him and all that and. You know, we don't know what we're talking about. They got all the answers. If y'all got all the answers at nine and eight, boy, Lord, have mercy. We are doomed. Uh, let's see. The Saints uh, should track back in the first round uh, to pick up a third and fourth round pick. Well, I, I say this. Oh, uh, you say trade back. Excuse me, Charles. Say, I said I need to trade back. But, yeah, not a fan of it, Charles. Not a fan of it. I'm going to tell you why. The reason why is uh, this team is not good under Dennis Allen. And uh, I think we all kind of see where this thing is going. So if Dennis Allen cannot live up to his potential and he gets fired, then you find yourself like some of the, the, the draft picks that you traded for 
might not make the team look as appealing when you're trying to get a new head coach. So I would say, like, keep try to find the right guys at the positions that you have right now. So in 2025, you can actually have all your draft picks available to you um, or as many as possible. Because I, I I just don't believe in them. I'm sorry, Charles. Like, I'm not going to pretend like I believe in these dudes. And maybe like in another, yeah, I guess like in another dimension when the, the Saints look like something, we can have these conversations. But <laughs> they just, <laughs> I, I just, I'm just like, man, I just want this thing to be over, and I don't want them to set themselves back any more than what they already have trying to make this Dennis Allen, Derek Carr experience work. So, yeah. TJ Armstrong. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, they call me the reach king because I, I stay reaching. I, 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 need to, I need to ride the coattails of other podcasters. Uh, I need to be like everybody else. I, I'm not creative enough. I got to watch other people's stuff in order for me to actually have a you know, uh, I guess like a dialogue. Yeah, I, all these different things, right? I mean, even though I came out a little bit before a lot of these other podcasts that came out, but I'm trying to be like everybody else. I'm reaching. I got to I gotta do stuff in order for me to stay relevant. Yeah, so call me TJ Armstrong. Call me that. I, 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 go ahead and call me that. I'll be TJ Armstrong. Let's see. Uh, why do players get more heat for not developing instead of the saints getting heat for being bad developers. That is the million dollar question. It's also the million dollar question is why is it y'all ever wondered to this? Y'all ever wondered why is it that every time a player is disgruntled, people get mad at the player. They never get mad at the organization. Like I don't, I don't know what it is, man. Well, I do know what it is, and some of y'all know where I'm getting at. I lived in Louisiana for 30 plus years of my life, so you can't tell me anything about Louisiana. A lot of these people out here, like, y'all know. But they have, like, uh, you know, they got these reservations about players. They need to shut up. They need to, man, they making millions. That, that's that's their thing right there. They're making millions of dollars. What do they have to complain about? Well, let me tell you something. If you're making a hundred thousand dollars a year, sixty thousand dollars a year, right? Everybody ain't making sixty thousand dollars a year. Everybody ain't making a hundred thousand dollars a year. But let somebody piss you off at your job. Yes, I just said that. Let them make you upset at your job. That doesn't matter how much money that you're making. But these players are supposed to live and operate at a different standard that even you yourself wouldn't live by. And we always get mad at said player and never the organization. Michael Thomas is a cancer. Well, you have to ask yourself, is he, is he the symptom or is he the disease? I'm just, I'm just wondering because I didn't hear this type of energy. Maybe it was there, but they did a really good job at covering it up. I didn't see this type of energy when Peyton and Breeze was there. But I'm seeing it a whole heap and a hell of a lot now. Now it's the player's fault. But like I said, I lived in I lived in Louisiana, you know, I was, well, I lived in Louisiana for 19 years, okay? For 19, I left after Katrina, but that's my home. So you ain't about to tell me anything about Louisiana. Then on top of that, my mom, you know, stayed in, in Tulula. Not my grandparents stayed in, in, in Tulula, Louisiana. So, I mean, hey. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't tell me anything about Louisiana. I know where some of that, that those emotions are coming from. Y'all know what I'm talking about. They never want to blame the organization. It's always the player's fault. And they should shut up because they're making a certain amount of money. Well, I tell you what. I don't care how much money I'm making. I don't care what I'm doing. I am not going to take any level of disrespect. And honestly, if I'm not being treated fairly or I feel like something is unjust, I don't care what type of tax bracket you in. I don't feel like if you have something to complain about, there should be tax brackets that, that minimizes it. If you got an issue with something, doesn't matter how much money you make, no matter what, what you're doing, you deserve to be heard. But nobody takes a look at that. 
They rather look at Michael Thomas as a cancer. They they rather go up here and say, well, Marshawn Lattimore, he's been hurt over the last couple of years and try to minimize him. But what was this secondary was like before this dude got here? Oh, we have a tendency of forgetting about that. Let me interest you in Jason David and Fred Thomas and Brandon Browner. Can I interest you in that? When the Saints couldn't stop a nosebleed, couldn't stop a for, couldn't stop traffic with a stop sign. Couldn't stop a cab in New York City. But y'all got the audacity to talk about a guy who can neutralize the field since he came to the Saints in 2017. Y'all rather ish on this dude than to look at the organization and their ineptitude over the last two and a half, three years. But it's their fault. Tell me what the secondary was like before Marshawn Lattimore got there. And for all those fools out there that just feel like, and no, nothing against Alante, but in all these fools out here that just feel like it's plug and play and they can get that same type of production, I don't want to hear a damn thing said if the Saints just so happen to trade Marshawn Lattimore in the NFL draft and Alante Taylor goes there and from time to time he getting beat like a Persian rug. Because you had a lockdown, shutdown corner there and it still wasn't good enough for half of you. So... You rather blame the players than to blame the organization. Now, sometimes it could be the player's fault. It could be the player's fault, but I, 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 I'm looking at a trend here. I'm looking at a trend here. When it comes to players, there's always seen to be, well, they're making a certain amount of money. What do they have to complain about? Miss me with that, man. Some, Like I said, some, some of you... Some of you, I mean, come on, come on. It, it can't, it can't always be the players. If your team has been losing 20, 21, 22, 20, can, can, how long, like, how long can we keep on blaming the players? How can we keep on blaming the players? Like, if your team isn't helped, how many times, uh, well, they need to get on board. Maybe they are on board. You ever just thought maybe the organization is not doing the right things? Maybe they're holding on to people too long. Maybe they're not bringing the right people in. Maybe they have this undying allegiance to certain people because maybe they did something back in the days when the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air was on. Or, I don't know, new episodes of Pokemon, Indigo Journeys. Maybe because they did it during those times, they forever indebted to them, so it's just so hard to let go. Right? It's so hard to let those guys go. You cannot run an organization based on emotion. That's true. I, I will say that. Mickey Loomis did say that. He says you can't run it based on emotion, but at the same time, you've been running this organization based on em emotion for a very, very long time. And it's time to get away from that. It's time to call a spade a spade. You have done everything in your power for the last two and a half years to make people feel that Dennis Allen is the answer. If it does not pan out, don't make no excuses. Get that dude up out of here and find somebody that's going to make this team better. If you're not doing that, wasting everybody's time. Thank you all so much for checking out the State of the Saints podcast. Really do appreciate it. Much love to each and every one of you. I ask that you hit that like button, number one. And if you're new, I ask that you hit that subscribe button. Subscribe to the State of the Saints podcast. You can check out the State of the Saints podcast on all streaming platforms, Apple, Spotify, iHeart, Anchor. You can also follow me on X, <coughs> excuse me, at TJ, <laughs> TJY Jones 8. And uh, I really do appreciate everybody's time, man. Appreciate everybody's time. Appreciate everybody's patience. No, it's been almost two weeks since I did a show. But I appreciate it, man. And uh, much love to everybody out there. Uh, we'll be back, man. We'll be back this week talking about the New Orleans Saints, um, talking about uh, a few things uh, that are going on with the organization. Also, I'm asking everybody to check out the uh, Bleacher Report. Uh, a new episode of Saints Talk with TJ Jones is available, talking about the Saints' possible draft trades. Uh, kind of answers the question with Charles there. Uh, and, and, you know, check that out. Should the Saints make a trade? All right. Thank you all so much. Have a good morning, noon, night, whenever you're checking out this podcast. Like always, all I got to say is.
Thank you for listening to my daddy's podcast. Hey, don't let these tears fool you. It's all dog around this mug. I'm good. <laughs>